Good evening. We are going to work on an exercise in which we have a company that has multiple transactions dealing with purchase and sale of inventory. We're going to be looking at the period, the perpetual inventory system. So let's take a look at the exercise we have on hand and what the journal entries are going to entail. So we, are, we start the exercise with the following information that at the beginning of the year of the current season on April 1st, the ledger of Granite Hill Pro Shop showed cash with a $2,500 balance, inventory $3,500, and common stock $6,000. We're also told that we have the following transactions that have happened in the month of April. We've been told that we have the following accounts in our chart of account, which means these are the accounts we are most likely going to use in these journal entries. And finally, we've been asked to prepare the journal entries for all these transactions using the perpetual inventory system, post everything into the T account, beginning with obviously the beginning balances, and to prepare the trial balance at April 30th, 2022. So the first step is to do our journal entries. So in our journal, as we know, we have a column for date, account name, debit and credit amounts. Our T accounts, they've told us which accounts we need. So I have the account set up. We have cash accounts receivable, inventory accounts payable, common stock, sales revenue, sales return and allowance, and cost of goods sold. I've used a couple acronyms over here, but we know what they are. We will be preparing a trial balance for the trial balance, the header always looks as follows. First line, we have the name of the company. Second line, we write, identify the statement. In this case, it's a trial balance. And third line, we have the date as of which we're gonna prepare it, which is April 30th. In a trial balance, we list all the accounts that have a non-zero balance at the end of the period. And we identify whether it's a debit or a credit balance. So, the last thing I need to do before I start with my transactions is put the beginning balance. These numbers were given to me over here. Cash is 2,500, inventory is 3,500, and common stock is 6,000. Cash and inventory are assets, so they have debit balances. Common stock is an equity account, therefore it has a credit balance. And you will notice total assets plus liabilities equals owner's equity. We have no liabilities at the start of the period, so my two assets are exactly equal to my equity account. So let's get started with our transactions. On April 5th, I purchased golf balls, clubs and balls, golf bags, clubs and balls on account from Arnie Company for $1,500. The terms are 310 net 60. So I will start out with the date, April 5th. I have made a purchase, so inventory is going to be debited because I'm using the perpetual inventory system. It's on account, therefore I credit accounts payable. Now I'm going to write a quick explanation over here for myself. The terms are 310 net 30. That means I get a 3% discount if I pay within the next 10 days. Otherwise I have to pay the full amount within 60 days. And the dollar amount of this transaction is $1,500. Once again, Inventory debit, accounts payable credit for $1,500. So I shall go ahead and post this into my T accounts immediately. And what I'm doing now is called real-time posting. After each journal entry, I shall post it. The next one is on, next transaction is on April 7th. I paid freight on the Arni purchase, $80. So I paid for the freight, which means the cost of my inventory has gone up. The actual count of my inventory did not go up, but the cost of the inventory went up to the extent I paid for the freight, for the shipping charges, $80. So cash is credited, $80, and inventory is debited, $80. So I'm gonna post those into those two T accounts. On the 9th, I received credit from Arnie Company for merchandise returned. So I made a return, and for this return, they've given me a credit. When they give me a credit, what it basically means is my accounts payable is gonna decrease because I don't owe that money now because I returned the goods. And since I've returned the goods, I'm gonna credit inventory because my inventory balance has gone down. So inventory credit, 
accounts payable debit. So accounts payable on the debit side, I'm gonna put 200 to decrease it. Inventory, I'm gonna put 200 on the credit side to decrease it. On the 10th, I sold merchandise on account to members for 1340. The terms are net 30. The merchandise cost me $820. So I'm this time I'm the seller. So I first write the journal entry. The journal, uh, the date is uh, April 10th. Now I'm going to receive money. It's on account. So accounts receivable debit and I credit sales. And the dollar amount over here is 1340. That's how much I sold it for. Now I'm not as generous as my sellers, as my vendors, I'm saying net 30. I'm not giving any discount. You have to pay the full amount in 30 days is what I'm telling my members. On the same day, I have to do another journal entry to update my inventory records. And now I'm indicating my inventory balance has gone down by $820. And this $820, I'm expensing it. I'm calling it cost of goods sold expense. So just like we had done with supplies, when you buy supplies, you debit the asset account. When you use it, you credit it. Here, when we buy inventory, we debit it. When we sell the inventory, we credit inventory and we debit cost of goods sold, which is an expense. So let's go ahead and post first this journal entry. Accounts receivable is gonna be debited, 1340. Inventory will be credited, oh, sorry, sales will be credited. Sales revenue will be credited, 1340. Inventory, cost of goods sold is debited. Let's do the debits first, 820. And inventory is credit, 820. On the uh, 12th, I made more purchases. I purchased golf shoes, sweaters, and other accessories on account from Wood Sportswear for $830. The terms are 110 net 30. So let's start with the date, April 12th. My journal entry is inventory debit, accounts payable credit. And let me write the terms so I remember what they are, 110 net 30. And the dollar amount of my purchase is $830. Once again, let me go ahead and post this. $830 on the debit side. I post into the T account. I transfer that amount. Accounts payable credit, $830. Okay. On the 17th, sorry, on the 14th, I paid Arnie company in full. So we need to take a little breather over here and see how much I owed Arnie company. This is the first purchase that I had made. I made a purchase for one fifteen hundred but I returned $200 worth of goods. So the amount that I owe Arnie is only 1300. So accounts payable is gonna be debited. Accounts payable will be debited 1300 because that's how much I owe. Once again, I'm gonna highlight it over here so we can see this. Accounts payable was debited. Accounts payable was credited relating to this particular vendor, okay? Remember there is another accounts payable, but that's a different vendor. So I owed $1,300 to this particular vendor. I'm paying it off in full. Now, let's pay attention to the dates. The terms were 310 net, 310 net 60. So 3% discount if I pay within the next 10 days. Date of invoice is April 5th. We count from the day after the invoice, from April 6th onwards, 10 days. We are within the 10-day period. So I'm entitled to the 3% discount. So. To the extent I get the discount, my inventory is that much less expensive. 3% of 1300 is going to be $39. So my inventory is that much less expensive and the amount of cash I'm paying is the difference, the 97%, which is 1261, or I can just take 1300 minus 39. Now let me go ahead and post this. Accounts payable, is going to decrease by 1300. So I'm debiting accounts payable. Inventory is also going to decrease by 39. And I'm writing out a check for the remainder, 1261, okay? So now that we're done with that, let's move on to the 17th. I received credit from Wood Sportswear for merchandise returned worth $30. 
So now let's take a look. I have on April 17th, I have made a return. This is similar to the journal entry I had done before over here on the 9th. Accounts payable debit, inventory credit, that's $30. I made a return, $30 uh, $30 worth of return. So accounts payable debit, $30, and inventory credit, $30 to the extent of the return. On the 20th, I made sales on account to members for $810. The terms are net 30 again. The cost of this merchandise is $550. Now this is gonna be similar to the journal entry we did over here on the 10th, it's identical, okay? So let's go ahead and see what my journal entry is going to look like. I'm going to have accounts receivable debit, sales credit, the terms are net 30, that's $810. And on the same day, I need to have another journal entry and that is going to be cost of goods sold debit, inventory credit, for the $550, because that's what the amount is here, $550, okay. Let's go ahead and post this. Accounts receivable is debited. Accounts receivable debit. My sales revenue is credit. Cost of goods sold is debit. And inventory is credit, okay. Now that I have that, let's move on. On the 21st, I paid Wood Sportswear in full. Okay, so now, Wood Sportswear. Let's take a look at this. I made a purchase, again, highlighting in a different color so we see this. I made a purchase of $830. I made a return. I returned inventory worth Eight, uh, what thirty dollars? So again, let's look at this. Accounts payable credit, eight thirty. Accounts payable debit, thirty. So how much do we owe this particular vendor? We owe eight hundred dollars. We are paying off that eight hundred dollars. Okay, so let's first write the date. The amount we owe. First thing, let's write that down. The amount we owe is $800. Again, I showed you where I got that $800 from. 830 minus 30, $800 I owe, I'm paying it in full. The terms were 110 net 30. April 12th, April 21st, I'm within that 10 day period. So I get that 1% discount this time. So to the extent I get the discount, Inventory will be credited because it's that much less expensive. 1% is $8. So the amount I'm paying now is $792. That's the difference over here that I'm actually paying up. So let's go ahead and post it. Accounts payable is going to be debited, $800. Inventory will be credited, $8. And cash will be credited. $792, okay. On the 27th, we granted an allowance to members for clothing that did not fit properly. So the client, the customers did not return the goods to me. My members did not return the goods to me. I just gave them a break in price. So those were all credit sales, those accounts receivable. Now what I'm saying is, I'll give them a break in price without them returning the goods to me. So inventory is not coming back. Accounts receivable is going to be credited $80. So what should I debit? I'm going to debit sales return and allowance. Sales return and allowance will be debited $80. This is a contra revenue account because my sales has decreased. My, the total dollar amount of the sales that I had has decreased. We never debit sales. We use the contra account, sales return and allowance. That's $80. So sales return and allowance debit, $80. And accounts receivable credit, $80.
And then finally, on the 30th, they tell us that we received payment on account from members 1,220. So my journal entry is fairly straightforward over here. Cash debit, accounts receivable credit, 1220. Now we do need to keep detailed records of which clients, which of my members are making the payment that they owe me. However, I'm not worried about any discount and when the transaction was done, because all of them, the terms were net 30. We weren't giving anyone any discount, okay? So for these other transactions where we got discounts, we had to actually track down and see how much we owed each vendor. So if we were offering discounts, we'd have to track down who the uh, people were the members and the dates, but that's not significant over here because that's not relevant over here because we weren't offering any discounts. Okay, so that's cash debit, accounts receivable credit. So let's go ahead and post that. Cash debit, cash debit, and accounts receivable credit, 1220. Now that we've gone through all our journal entries and done our, the journal entry as well as posting into the ledger, we are ready to close all the ledger accounts and find the balances and then bring it into the trial balance. So we start out with, if the account has more than one debit or credit, add up the two sides and then take the difference between the two and put it on the side that's larger. So in this case, what we have over here is, we have, sorry, let me get this over here. Yeah, we have uh, cash with a balance of 1587. We do the same thing for accounts receivable. You find the balance, add up the two sides, take the difference, and then we say our balance is 850. Again, for inventory, we're gonna do the exact same thing. And inventory has a balance of 4283. Just going really quickly with my, just drawing the line so I can show you where I'm getting these numbers from. Accounts payable, we're going to do the same thing. And here is something interesting. When you look at these numbers, what do we see over here? What we see over here is the amounts are exactly the same, which means the balance is zero. Okay, and this is significant. I'll tell you when we get to the trial balance why it's significant. I'm putting the zero balance under the credit side because accounts payable normally have a credit balance. For no other reason am I doing that over there. Common stock had only one entry, the beginning balance, nothing happened to it during the current period, so it stays the same. And then for our sales revenue, we have the number only on the credit side, two numbers, so you add those up, and your balance is 2150. Sales return and allowance, there's only one entry, so that's our balance. And cost of goods sold, we had two sales transactions, therefore we have uh, two of the cost of goods sold entries. And that gives me a balance of 1370. Okay, now that I have this done, I'm ready to do my last step. And the last step is preparing my trial balance. I have the name of the company, the trial balance, name of the statement and the date. In a trial balance, I'm going to list only accounts that have a non-zero balance. So which one is not going to show up? This one, accounts payable. Let's put in a different color here. This has a zero balance, which means I don't need to put it over here. All the other accounts, I'm going to bring them in over here and add up the two sides, the debit and the credit side. And hopefully I've done everything correctly. And my total debits equal to my total credits, which is true in this case. I have 8,100 on both sides. So I know I have done my, uh, uh, the work through the problem correctly in terms of the double entry bookkeeping system. I have total debits equal to total credits. So I'm good with that number over here, 8,150. So once again, in this exercise, we have looked at a company that has made purchases, and that has sold the inventory that they purchased. 
They purchased with terms where they were getting discounts. So you have to follow through on those very carefully. If they have any returns, if they made any returns or they got allowances, the money they owe is that much less. So make sure you calculate that carefully. Once you take care of that, the rest of it is relatively easy. Also remember in the perpetual inventory system, whenever you sell, you have two journal entries. One to record the sale and the other is to expense the inventory. Cost of goods sold is an expense account. You need to expense the inventory. So this is a quick overview of the perpetual inventory system, journal entries, key accounts, and trial balance.